Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. I'm so glad you're tuning in today. Registered Dental Assistant Will Schmidt is back with another edition of Across the Chair. It's a jam-packed show. Will is demonstrating his BioTemps delivery technique that he's been busy developing. He's using the plastic fast stent technique and delving into details about this process with examples of patients with different temporization needs. Everything from simple and straightforward to a little more complicated. Let's get to it. Will, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Megan. For this episode, I want to revisit a BioTemps placement technique that I have been casually presenting in recent episodes. In order to nail down and expedite my own BioTemp reline and seating procedure, I have requested BioTemps to accompany every single case that my doctor is preparing in the operatory, no matter the difficulty level, so that we can develop a way to streamline the process from beginning to end. Let's face it, for a prefabricated provisional to do its job and be worth the effort, it absolutely must be more simple to construct and more aesthetic in appearance than a chairside fabricated temporary that is based upon a preliminary impression. Today I would like to officially present our fast stent assisted placement steps, or as I like to call it, the BioTemp guide well technique. To show how versatile this placement technique can be, I'm going to walk you through four unique patient treatments at the provisional stage. My first example involves a young man with three endodontically treated anterior teeth. Before any temporary is relined, I swab the preparations with a smear of Vaseline to prevent acrylic adhesion. The BioTemp has been nested into the plastic fast stent and the acrylic reline can now be extruded. I place a small drop of acrylic on my glove so that I can monitor the curing process without disturbing the reline. When using the fast stent as a seating guide, I am less worried about overflow acrylic finding its way back out. The stent guides the excess up and away from the biotemp and leaves a thin layer between the margin and the gingiva, making the removal and cleanup process less involved. I am also able to put firm pressure on the biotemp as the reline sets while not worrying about the temporary tipping or turning. The fast stent comes off gently and doesn't ever stick to reline acrylic. Upon removal, it is apparent that the reline is a success and the excess to trim is very minimal. I open the embrasures of splinted temporaries with a long thin diamond flame burr to allow the recently retracted tissue a chance to rebound properly. Minimal touch-up has to be done to the facial of the biotemp and it can be seated just as straightforward as the reline process. Moving right along to a slightly less straightforward case, this patient has deep interproximal sulcus and areas distal to the lateral incisors that could cause reline material to flow and lock the temporary into place. During instances such as this, I like to take an additional step and place flowable blockout resin to the areas that may cause unnecessary hangups. A quick light cure, smear layer placement, and the fast stent nested biotemps can be placed for the reline cure process. Once set, the blockout resin can be gently punched out of the interproximal areas to clear the path of initial removal. Additional blockout resin that sticks to the biotemp can be easily removed with a spoon excavator or a handpiece. Once again, minimal flash removal and reshaping is necessary before final seat of the four unit crown veneer biotemp combo. In these combination cases, Temp Bond Clear is my cement of choice to adhere veneer units and prevent opaquing of matte shaded temporary cements. I think one of the more difficult placement situations for any temporary is a posterior three unit bridge. We are always limited with occlusal space and biting forces are more of a factor. The fast stent placement guide ensures that the temporary is suspended in perfect occlusion while the reline cures. A quick pop is all it takes to remove the stent and the bridge biotemp can be adjusted by first removing the excess flash acrylic, modifying the pontic to train the tissue for the final restoration, opening the embrasures, and then fine-tuning the shape of the individual units before trying it back in the mouth. I'll check the bite, however no occlusal adjustment was necessary, and I attribute this to the accuracy of the use of a guided fast stent. Embrasures are clear enough to allow an instrument to pass through, and seating is completed with a floss strip pre-threaded underneath the pontic area for quick cleanup. The fast stent process is not just for occlusal assurance and path of insertion, 
but also to guide the acrylic reline in a direction that allows embrasures and ponic areas to remain open and hygienic. Well, here is another interesting biotemp placement and one that I don't see very often. This patient had number 24 and 25 endodontically treated, necessitating crowns to restore them. In cramped areas such as the mandibular anterior, the fast tent comes in handy to hold the very small and very thin biotemp shells in place. Most lower anterior preparations need a small amount of blockout, and I'll apply this along with a smear layer of Vaseline and light cure before final reline is administered. The stent is removed easily enough that pressure from a bendable micro brush does the trick. The ultra thin flash that was trained by the stent can be removed to expose the blockout resin that is just as easily discarded. Light pressure to unseat the biotemp and any remaining blockout can be flaked away from the margins. While adjusting the margins and flash, I want to make the point once again and show how well the excess acrylic was trained to flow into the biotemp shell and away from the adjacent teeth and embrasure areas. I will always go back to the thin flame diamond burr and continue to open interproximal areas of splinted units, being careful not to overtrim the margins. Dry seating and checking occlusion even after the stent placement is beneficial considering this temporary needed a spot adjustment. The application of temp bond clear cement was a good choice in this situation due to the thin shells and light overall shade of the arch. When splinted embrasures are open to satisfaction, the practitioner and patient should both be able to insert a floss threader with ease. The final product is a success, and the fast stint is available to fabricate a backup chairside temporary in the improbable instance that a catastrophic failure of the biotemp were to occur in the meantime. I want doctors, auxiliaries, and of course your patients to benefit from the techniques that I have presented here. Every step along the way, from the preparation of the temporary to the reline and eventual seating, relies on a predictable process and ease of application that can be utilized in any situation. To get started, simply include instructions to the technician on your Biotemps lab slip to add a fast stent. For any case involving a diagnostic wax model to be fabricated, make sure to instruct your technician to mimic the Biotemps off of that diagnostic wax model, and then of course, add the fast stent. Thank you for that, Will. For more information on Biotemps, check out our website at www.glidewelldental.com. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. So on behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.